Duelists, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video, we are going to be doing a little discussion video on what you need to look out for for the next upcoming YCS, the first in-person YCS event that has been taking place in over two years, I believe. Um, this is very exciting. I am super, super hyped for it. I will be attending. Um, but as of right now, we have no ban list and no current um, reason to believe that we are going to get a ban list before this event. So as what we can assume, uh, as of now, this is the ban list and the card pool that we're most likely going to have uh, for the this YCS upcoming. So we need to be as prepared as possible and we're going to talk about some things that you should look out for, and maybe some counters to those things. Before we begin with the discussion, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. It is so easy and it helps so much and it keeps me motivated to make videos like these and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. As we all know, Konami has announced the next in-person YCS event. This is very exciting because we haven't had one in so many years and it is being held in Pasadena, California, Las Vegas, no Charlotte, North Carolina. That is where it's going to be held. Charlotte, North Carolina. Had a bit of a hiccups, but we are finally going to have it in Charlotte, North Carolina. I do not see this one getting canceled. This one seems to be legit all the way through. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very excited for it. Now, as I said before, we are probably going to have the same meta as we have now for this event. Um, now, luckily for us, we do have regionals coming up before the YCS that will give us some very reliable uh, top deck and text that our people are using for the, uh, for the current format. Um, so we're going to have plenty of deck profiles on plenty of channels. Um, hopefully I can get some deck profiles for the regionals I'll be attending to be able to show you guys. And if I see anything specifically interesting, I'll hopefully try to get a, some kind of interview and deck profile with them. Um, just to show you guys uh, other options that you could play in the meta. But as of right now, we're going to be talking about the main things that are presumably the best right now. And then uh, how you can either counter it and what you need to do. And just to keep in mind when you're deck building of what to expect at these events. A lot of these choices are not going to be anything surprising. This is very general. So we've been keeping up with the meta. Um, this is pretty straightforward. But if you were just coming back to be able to return to in-life uh, tournaments, and this would be something that would be really helpful to you because you get to know what you've pretty much missed for the past couple of years and what to expect going back in. The first bunch of cards I'd like to mention for the current Yu-Gi-Oh! meta, I think is the most problematic one that you're going to see a lot of, is... I will say the Brave Package. The Brave Package is very, very dominant right now, and you're going to see a lot of decks playing it. Um, because of this, you are seeing an upbringing amount of hand traps, such as Ghost Ogre being played right now, to counter it. So this is something to look out for. You also have to watch out for the extra interruptions, and that your deck uh, should be playing, at least be able to open with two hand traps so that you can be able to stop their combo plays. And what I mean by this is that the Brave Package pretty much makes a board that uh, can make an interruption without you having to be able to hand trap them or dedicate the normal summon or anything from their combos. So if you have one hand trap, they can stop the combo with the Brave Package by itself, and then you're going to need another hand trap to be able to stop their actual deck that they're playing. So that's just something to keep in mind. Moving forward, we are also going to have the Artifact Package. I think this is the next biggest problem in the meta. Um, the fact that you are able to resolve Artifact Scythe so fluently is something that you should definitely look out for. There are ways to play around this and cards to play, such as Forbidden Chalice, Forbidden Droplet, and sometimes Infinite Impermanence, depending on how your opponent plays it. Um, but this is just things that are very, very important. Um, Scythe is obviously extremely oppressive, and it could be very important to your deck building and what choices you want to make. Maybe you don't want to lose to Scythe ever, and you just never want to get blown out by one card. Elwitch might be a good choice for you, just so that you don't, if you get Scythe and your opponent uses DPE, you take that as the free advantage as it is, and then you can use your Brave Tokens, maybe your Magician Souls, and then just gain advantage, and then on your opponent's turn in their draw phase, you use Hikaru to banish their DPE, and the Scythe never mattered in the first place, right? So it's just something to keep in mind when you're going into an event like this, of why it's important to know what the meta is and how to counter it. Um, so yeah, Scythe is a big problem, and it is something to look out for heavily. Now, moving on from Scythe, but something that ties with Scythe is the Destiny Hero Package. Uh, this package is very, very good. There's usually about four cards. You usually have Fusion Destiny, Destiny Hero Dasher, Destiny Hero Celestial, and Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, I believe it's called the exact name. And it is very, very oppressive. Um, be, it doesn't look oppressive on paper, but in practice, it is much, much better than something like uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoons that we've seen in the past, which is still legal, by the way, so it's something to keep in mind. But the fact that the uh, Destiny Hero Bricks are so and so um, much better than the Dark Magician and the Red Eyes because you can A, normal summon them, 
B, if you go past the next turn, you are be able to get a free pot of greed out of it. Also, you'd be able to use Dasher's Effect and Graveyard to special summon a monster out of your hand that could possibly be used for a combo extension play on the follow-up. So it's just definitely better than Dragoon Package right now, just because of the sheer utility. The once per turn pop, I would not say is directly better than the Dragoon, but the fact that you are able to pop, pop your own artifact Scythe to then uh, lock, obviously Scythe lock your opponent on your opponent's turn is something that is extremely, extremely oppressive and you need to look out for it wholeheartedly, definitely, and everything is playing it because of the utility of a card like Predaplant Verte Anaconda. Being able to use any fusion spell from your deck is pretty crazy, and with something like this running around, I am not surprised that this is going to be um, probably one of the most prominent things in these event. Another package that might possibly be used is the Tenyi package. The Tenyi package is very good because it is good going first or second. It sets up your combo plays and to be able to go good going second to be able to bounce cards your opponent controls so that you can break boards very very easily this is something that not many engines can do to be able to have going first applications as well when going second um the other engine that can do it as i previously mentioned was brave to be able to break boards um they have a equip spell to be able to bounce cards and the tenure package has a monster that can bounce card Vishuda. um so it is very very good uh, many decks have been playing just Vishuda. some play the full tenure package it depends on the deck building itself um, but you really need to hone, like when you're playing an opponent, and let's say they have multiple cards of over 40, probably be 50, 60. Um, as you're playing the match, you're going to have to try to figure out what kind of deck that they are playing, because you cannot understand what they're playing just from playing 60 cards anymore. Um, you could be playing an Elvich Cybers deck for all you know. You could be playing the full base deck. You could be playing the Tenny Synchro deck. You just don't know what it is. Um, so it is something to keep in mind for an event like this that... It is not easy to decide what your deck, what your opponent is playing just off the first two turns. You have to figure out what engines that they're all playing in their deck and what synergizes the best with those engines so you can use in your head that what they might be siding in or out against you for the next couple games. So this is just something to keep in mind. But overall, yeah, the 10 are really, really good. They facilitate synchro plays, give you free tuner monsters, and are good going first and second. Um, they also set up a Halky Fiber X play, which is going to be the next cards I talk about. Is Halky Fiber X, Despot 001, and Auroradon. Uh, Mecha Phantom Beast Auroradon to be specific. Um, this is a huge combo that pretty much ends on three level three tokens, a Link Monster uh, up top, and a Despot 001, which is a level one token. And this is accomplished with any monster plus any tuner monster. Um, it does not matter if the other one is a non-tuner, or if it is another tuner, or if it's a token, it doesn't even matter. Um, it's very easy, and a lot of the times people are making this board, or are starting this combo, that's pretty much the baseline combo where it starts, um, with having the either a something like Baron the Floor to protect it. So again, going back to that two hand trap logic, this is why you need those two hand traps. Um, also, uh, some combos are opting to go into something like Mare Mare. Um, to be able to facilitate back to the artifacts and the destiny hero package again everything goes back with each other all these engines can be switched around and used together and it's something very important to keep in mind when going into the events and again we are going to see the results of these upcoming regionals before the ycs so it's something good that we can at least uh, try to follow the meta as it develops speaking of the cybers elish tech as i mentioned before the cybers package is a very minor package but what this package does is very very impactful for just a normal summon that does not dedicate a lot it doesn't activate any effects you cannot be veiling it or anything like that super super strong so what happens is usually the normal summon a cybers monster that has a grave effect to somehow summon another cybers monster there's like three of them there's like dotscaper um cybers gadget and i think there's another one too as well i don't remember the name of it right now um and then when you get the other card you make uh link devotee with it and then you can use the card Link Disciple that you linked off the first card for to tribute off the Devotee. And then you draw a card and put a card from your hand back into your deck. And then the Devotee that you tributed will special summon two uh, Cybers tokens, which then you can use those tokens for anything, again, such as Artifact Dagda or Predaplant Verde Anaconda. Or if you're playing a tuner, maybe you can go into something like uh, Halky Fiber X. Um, again, these are all things that are possible right now. Uh, so you have to figure out what your opponent is playing specifically. Lastly, something that I don't think is being utilized to its fullest potential right now. I know, I know a lot of the better players are using it right now, but over the past couple of weeks, looking at some of the results of tournaments, um, I believe that there is a minor package of cards that could be used better um, that I have not seen used to its full capacity, I would say. Uh, these 
two cards, I believe, is Magician Souls and Illusion of Chaos, and I'll throw her in preparation of rights in there too. Um, I think these cards are insane. Uh, the biggest problem with Magician Souls was that you did not have a brick in your, was that you had to play a brick in your deck to play it. You had to play your Gem Knight Garnet, you had to play your Dark Magician in it. Now, uh, you don't have that. You do not have to force any bad card in your deck. You essentially just play a fourth copy of Magician Souls with the inclusion of Illusion of Chaos. Um, this is a huge, huge upside, and it goes pairs with so many decks. Um, the Brave Token uh, package uh, in itself is already amazing with it. Um, being able to use it with Elwich cards is also amazing. I even even seen Prank Kids decks using it. It's uh, absolutely insane. Um, there is just so many decks that can use it and abuse it, and I really, really do think it is being underutilized for what it is. It is a special summon, a level 1 monster. It is a trawl 2. It is absolutely disgusting for no bricks, no dedication, and you really don't lose out on most things. So it's just something to keep in mind for the meta. Moving forward, um, I do want to go over the decks that I think are going to be very prominent in this event. Um, the first deck I'm going to say is the base deck, of course. Um, this pretty much is a hodgepodge of all of the previous packages that I mentioned earlier, whether it be Destiny Hero, sometimes Cybers, sometimes it's Artifact, sometimes there's Brave, now there's like the Rose Dragon package, which I didn't even mention, but it's just pretty much a, tuning, uh, a tuner facilitating toolbox. Um, it's just so, so much, many things. The Tenny deck can be in there, the Tenny cards can be in there. Um, there's, it's just everything. Every, all of those into one deck. Um, that's based. I'm just. I'm not going to specify which one it is. It's all the same thing in for this category. Um, you have to figure it out as you're playing your opponent. Which ones they're playing, what they're going for, what their end board is. Um, that. <clears throat> excuse me. That is going to be up to your discretion. Um, the next deck I think that is going to be very, very good is going to be Prank Kids. Prank Kids, I feel like it's underrepresented because maybe it's boring, but it is super, super strong with the Brave Package being able to protect your Prank Kids combos and for its consistency and the amount of hand traps you can play in this deck. It is insane how many you can play and still hold the same consistency while playing around things like Ash and Valor. Um, and Nibiru, it's it's absolutely insane. The Brave Package facilitates being able to play around these things because you can chain block the Prank Kids in your graveyard. Um, this is a super, super strong deck, and I even saw a list play Magician Souls in it, which I think is correct. Um, it's absolutely bonkers what you can play in the, in the deck, and I think it is super underestimated right now. Next, I think Elwich is going to be popular. Now, I know we haven't seen a lot of Elwich because everything is so combo-oriented right now. Um, but Elwich, I think, has a lot going for it right now, and more than people might say. Um, obviously, we have Bray Package. Elwich is not a normal summon. We have the Cybers Package, so you can do things like Artifact Scythe and make dual, uh, Destiny Hero Phoenix Enforcer. Um, both of those facilitate very, very well. And again, we have the pre-mentioned Magician Souls, which synergizes, like, absolutely amazingly with the Elwich deck. Um, everything is just straight value. It's pretty much if you resolve it, you're getting a free plus two, which is just bonkers. Um, so, yeah. Um, I do think Elwich is going to have a place uh, in this. Um, next, I do think that the pure Sword Soul Tenyi deck, this is not the full um, Synchro uh, Tenyi combo deck. This is a pure Sword Soul deck, three Moyi, three Ecclesia, all that stuff. This is a Synchro based deck. Um, I think it has consistency going for it overall. Um, it's not as fragile as some of the Synchro decks where you can, sometimes if you don't have enough hand traps, they can still make a board and it's something to look out for. Um, I'm not, I don't think its ceiling is the highest by any means, but for what it does, being like straightforward at it, um, I do think it's very strong, and I think it might have a place because I think you can fit a lot of hand traps into the deck as well. So that's it for my opinion of the top decks right now that um, I believe could do top 32 to winning to the event. Um, I think these are the decks that have the highest probability of doing so. Um, if I missed any, feel free to leave down in the comments below. I always do my videos unscripted, so sometimes I just forget things because um, I'm not perfect. But um, in my head, from what I'm thinking about, uh, this is the top tier competitive decks that are currently uh, exist in the metagame that I think could win. Um, next up, I want to go over the hand trap cards that you have to look out for and try to play around. Um, this is a huge part of the meta right now, so... When you are making and theory crafting your deck, you have to think of what hand traps you're trying to play around. Um, and again, this is the part and section that I think that the Elwich deck, as I previously mentioned, um, has a huge advantage in because you are able to play around so many hand traps uh, without really doing anything for the most part. Um, so the hand traps, I'm just going to machine gun them off. Um, but these are all things that you really need to look out for that is going to be very prominent at this event. Um, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, Ghost Ogre, Snow Rabbit, uh, Ghost Bell, and Haunted Mansion. Um, possibly Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. I've seen people talk about it. Do I think it's good? Not really, but I think that 
Um, there's been enough traction online where I think some people might try to spice it in and try to hit things like Halky Fiber X, Predaplane, Verte, Anaconda, and DPE. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, Nibiru the Primal Being, Effective Veil or Infinite Impermanence, uh, DD Crow, Ghost, uh, not Ghost Bell, <laughs> Skullmeister for the Prank Kids, Cyframe Gear Gamma, that was the one I was missing. Again, if I missed any, feel free to leave them in the comments to help others who watch this video before the event. Um, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think that's going to be it for the actual uh, discussion. Um, that's going to be it for the video. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helps you if you are attending the YCS or if you, even if you're attending regionals, this might be able to help you because it can help you understand what the metagame is currently like coming back to in-person events. So overall, I thank you guys for watching the video. Again, just a reminder to please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.